वेलकम बैक देयर स्टूडेंट्स वी आर स्टार्टिंग ए न्यू लेसन दिस इज चैप्टर नंबर 13 ऑफ योर साइंस बुक एंड टुडेस टॉपिक इज मैग्नेटिक इफेक्ट्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करंट बिफोर दिस लेसन वी डिस्कस द चैप्टर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दैट वाज चैप्टर नंबर 12 सो इन दैट लेसन वी हैव ऑलरेडी कम टू नो मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट इलेक्ट्रिक करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड डिफरेंट एसोसिएटेड थिंग्स विद इलेक्ट्रिक करंट but today we are discussing another very interesting topic and in this topic we will be discussing the magnetic effect of electric current the name indicate its itself indicates that we are definitely going to discuss a relation between magnetism and electricity but interestingly at the time of discovery of magnetism as well as electricity nobody believed that these two different phenomena of magnetism and electricity might have some connection between them accidentally it was discovered by one scientist and he was hans christian oersted and it was in 1820 but before 1820 there was a time we never believed that there could be some relation between a magnet and electric current magnet was discovered by the greek sapphir his name was magnus he used to wear some shoes where uh, he used some nails under the shoes to avoid the slippery surface over the ice actually he took his steps to the hill slope for grazing and at that time he has to walk over the slippery surfaces of ice at that time when he returns every day in his home he used to find that his shoes became heavy but why it was actually because of some stones they always remain attached to his shoes because below the shoes he used some iron nails and due to those stone like structures or you can say stones the shoes always appear to be heavy that is the load of the shoes always increased therefore they named them as load stones after that the load stones were found to be the first natural magnet these were the magnets and for that reason they remain attached below the shoes where he used some iron nails and similarly you know the greek scientist he was actually not a scientist but we can definitely say him as a scientist because he discovered for the first time the electricity that was static electricity and he was king thales so both electricity and magnetism were discovered in greece long back but at that time or even before 1820 nobody believed that there could be some relation but it was christian orsted hans christian orsted in 1820 he was performing an experiment by taking an electric conducting wire and through this wire he was passing electricity and when he was passing electricity accidentally there was a magnetic needle placed very near to the mag that is a current carrying conductor the moment he passes electric current through the wire he noticed that the magnetic needles get deflected so we can understand this from this diagram this is the electric circuit that is hans christian orsted he arranged this is the battery this is switch and when he made the switch on the current passes through this circuit but near the circuit there was a magnetic needle place this magnetic needle usually remains always in the north south orientation but the moment the current was passing through the circuit he noticed that the magnetic needle which was normally oriented in the north south direction it gets deflected and we are just showing this deflection direction in which direction it is getting deflected so that made this scientist hans christian orsted surprise why how this magnetic needle gets deflected due to passing of electric current then an idea came to his mind he knew that a magnetic needle can be deflected or attracted only in presence of another magnet therefore he had an idea might be due to passing of electric current through the wire the wire must behave like a magnet and due to this magnetism which is produced in the circuit or in the electric conducting wire might be this magnetic needle is getting deflected so what he did he started this experiment in a more systematic way what did he do he changed the direction of current in the circuit by changing the direction of battery he changed the direction of electric current in the circuit 
the moment he changed the direction of the electric circuit he found that the direction of the deflection also changed that is to say that if the battery is arranged in such a way that the positive is on the right hand side and negative is on the left hand side if the deflection is this direction that is clockwise direction then he changed the direction of the battery and the direction of current also will change and as the direction of current changes he found that the direction of deflection will be opposite that is anti clockwise so that has made him understood the yes this current carrying conductor is actually starting behaving like a magnet and as a result of that the magnetic needle which was placed very near to the electric circuit also get deflected in the second part of his experiment he did another interesting thing you know what is it he changed the distance of the magnetic needle from the electric current carrying wire that is you see this is the magnetic needle which was placed very near to this electric circuit and this is the first time he did and the second time he increased the distance that is the magnetic needle from this place he might have taken to another distance which is far away from the electric circuit in both the time he noticed a very interesting phenomenon and what was it when the magnetic needle was placed very near to the electric current carrying conductor then the rate of deflection was maximum that means more amount of deflection he could notice but when the distance of the magnetic needle was increasing to a great extent then the deflection decreases means the rate of deflection increases when the magnetic needle is placed very near to the current carrying conductor and the rate of deflection decreases as we increase the distance of the magnetic needle from the current carrying conductor so that has finally proved that the really a current carrying conductor starts behaving like a magnet so this was the beginning and people start understanding this that yes there is a relation between electricity and magnetism magnetism and electricity since they are interrelated therefore later on in science electricity and magnetism is studied together and we call this is as electromagnetism now we know a magnet has a magnetic field around it now what is a magnetic field to understand this let us see magnetic field lines magnetic field is actually the reason around a magnet within which the magnet can attract another magnetic substances so outside the magnetic field a magnet cannot attract any other magnetic substance within that magnetic field there are magnetic field lines and we are going to discuss that magnetic field lines what they are actually magnetic field lines are some imaginary lines drawn within the magnetic field which actually shows the direction of the north pole to understand this let us take this is a bar magnet this red colored area is the north pole and the blue colored area is the south pole of this bar magnet then we will see from the north pole and the south pole if you see you can see some lines are drawn and what are these lines these are the magnetic field lines and these field lines are present within this magnetic field of this bar magnet what are these magnetic field lines actually showing the magnetic field lines are showing actually the direction of the north pole the north pole is direction this is the direction and along which and you can see the magnetic field line has started from the north pole and we end somewhere in the south pole so these lines these lines that you can see drawn around the magnet are called as magnetic field lines the magnetic field lines actually show the force of attraction or repulsion from the north pole to the south pole now what are the properties of those magnetic field lines the, there are some properties and we are having here four properties of the magnetic field lines and the first property is that magnetic field lines emerge from north pole and they merge at the south pole all magnetic field lines from a to z all magnetic field lines will start from the north pole and they will end at that is the merge at the south pole so they will begin from north and they will end at the south pole and this is the first property of magnetic field lines the second property 
Second property is that the sphere lines or the magnetic field lines are actually some imaginary lines. They are actually not present around the magnet within the magnetic field. They are imaginary lines. They are drawn to understand the movement or you can say the direction of the north pole within the magnetic field. The third property, the relative strength of the magnetic field is shown by the degree of closeness of the field lines. Now, we, if we see, these are the magnetic field lines. This is the first magnetic field line, second magnetic field lines, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and eight magnetic field lines we can see. All the eight magnetic field lines are very closely packed at the north pole. Therefore, at the north pole, the strength of the magnetic field will be maximum. Why? Because the magnetic field lines are closely packed. The density is more there. That means where the density of the magnetic field lines is maximum, there the magnetic field is very strong. Similarly, in the south pole also, the magnetic field lines are very much dense. Therefore, both the poles, that is the north pole and south pole, these are the two reasons where the magnetic fields are actually very strong. But if we see in the middle, we can see between this magnetic field lines and that magnetic field lines, there is a maximum gap. gap. So gap is increasing. Since the gap is increasing, it will indicate that in that area, the magnetic field is a bit weaker than in the poles. And the fourth and the last property of the magnetic field line is that no two magnetic field lines are found to intersect each other at any point within that electric field. We will never see the first magnetic field line will cross the second magnetic field line. They will never cross. That means to say that no two magnetic field lines within the magnetic field will intersect each other. So these are the basic properties of the magnetic field lines. Now we are discussing another very important thing and that is the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor and if the conductor is straight. We see already we have found that a magnet, maybe it is a bar magnet, it has got a magnetic field and within that magnetic field there are magnetic field lines. Means a magnet always has a magnetic field lines. Now, Orsted performed this experiment and he, he found that when electric current passes through the wire, then the wire starts behaving like a magnet. Now, if the wire starts behaving like a magnet, then at that time, the wire since has been turned into a magnet, therefore it must have some magnetic field lines around the wire also, around the conductor also. Now, what will be the shape of those magnetic field lines? What will be the magnetic properties of those magnetic field lines produced around a current carrying conductor provided the current carrying conductor is straight there is no bend no that is it is a completely straight conducting wire then what will be the properties shape of those magnetic field lines around you to understand this we have to carry out an experiment this is a cardboard in a cardboard we have made a hole and through the hole, we have passed a current carrying conductor. This is a straight current carrying conductor. And the two ends of the current carrying conductors are connected to a resistor, then a source of potential difference, that is battery, and there is a switch, plug key. key. Whenever we will make the switch on, due to the presence of the battery, electric current will pass through the wire. Since this is the positive terminal and that is the negative terminal, so current will pass in the upward direction through the wire. Now if we take a magnetic needle here on the cardboard, then we will see every time the current is passing through the wire, the magnetic field, the, magnet, the magnetic needle will get deflected. And if we just get the direction in which the magnetic field, magnetic needle is getting deflected, we can be able to draw the magnetic field lines around this current carrying conductor. And if we draw the magnetic field lines around this straight current carrying conductor, we will interestingly found that all the magnetic field lines present around or present that is around the straight current carrying conductor will appear like some concentric circles. We can see this is the first magnetic field line. It is a circle. Then the second magnetic field line then the third magnetic field line and all those magnetic field lines are completely circle and all the circles have the same center therefore those magnetic field lines are some concentric circles we can see the field lines 
are some concentric circles provided the current carrying conductor is straight. Now, direction of the magnetic free lines. How can we find out? You can see here in this diagram, current is moving in the upward direction and I have given the direction of the magnetic free lines in the anti-clockwise direction. Anti. Why? Why did I give it? This was given by a very interesting rule and that is called as right hand thumb rule given by Maxwell, a very famous scientist, Maxwell's right hand thumb rule. What is this Maxwell's right hand thumb rule? Now, Maxwell's right hand thumb rule, it is used to determine the direction of magnetic field lines produced around a straight current carrying conductor. Now, the most convenient way of finding the direction of the field lines of a straight current carrying conductor, we have to imagine of holding the current carrying wire, that is the straight wire, in our right hand, pointing the thumb towards the direction of current. Now, imagine this is the straight current carrying conductor and current is moving in the upward direction then we will have to imagine as if we are holding this current carrying conductor with our right hand. We are just holding it in our right hand. How? Pointing the thumb towards the direction of current. This is the direction of current. I have already marked. This is the arrow mark showing upward. Means current is moving upward through this straight wire. So we will hold the current carrying conductor in such a way that we will be pointing our thumb to the direction of current. And we will hold it with our right hand. We will never use the left hand. Then if you hold it pointing the thumb in the direction of current. Then the other four fingers will curl along the current carrying conductor. So this other four fingers will give you the direction of magnetic field lines. And the thumb will give you the direction of current. So that is to say that the most convenient way of finding the direction of the field lines we have to imagine of holding the straight current carrying conductor in our right hand, pointing the thumb towards the direction of current. Then the other four fingers wrapped around the conductor will give the direction of the field lines. To understand this, let us take this diagram. In this diagram, we can see this is the current carrying conductor which is straight and current is going in the upward direction. So this is the direction of current. Then we have to imagine as if we are holding this current carrying conductor with our right hand pointing the thumb towards the direction of current. Then the other four fingers are curled along this direction anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. This direction is clockwise. So this is anti-clockwise. And this is the direction of magnetic field lines. So magnetic field lines will be moving in the anti-clockwise direction since current is moving in the upward direction. But in the same way if the current moves in the downward direction then we will hold it in this way, pointing the thumb in the downward direction. And then we will see the four fingers will curl in the clockwise direction. And thus, by using our right hand, we can very easily find out the direction of magnetic field lines around a current carrying conductor, provided the current carrying conductor is straight. So this is how, in this lesson, so far we have tried to understood that electricity and magnetism has some relation. If you have electric current, there is probability that you may get magnetism somewhere. Or if you have a magnet or magnetism with you, then somewhere definitely there is a possibility of getting electric current. This is exactly what happened. This was actually an electric circuit. There was a battery, there was a switch, there was no magnets at all. Simply the switch is on from the battery, current was passing through the wire. But very interestingly, the wire starts behaving like a magnet. How did we get the magnet? We got the magnet by passing electric current through a wire. And this is the relation between electricity and magnet. This is only the beginning. In our next class, we shall be discussing that is magnetic field which is produced in a circular loop. This was a straight conductor. We have just understood the phenomenon when you will pass electric current through a straight conductor but in our next class we shall be discussing the magnetic field that is produced in a circular loop that is a wire which is arranged in a circular pattern. Until then, goodbye.
थैंक यू